My name is Atario Mitchell and I'm the president of Bahamas Striping Group of Companies. Each company is diverse in its own way. Uh, Bahamas Striping deals with uh, road safety markings. Airport maintenance deals with the maintenance of airport landing strips and, and, and runways. Uh, Caribbean Pavement Solution deals with the pavement maintenance throughout the Bahamas and the Caribbean. And Bahamas Team Photography deals with team photography at tourist destinations throughout the Bahamas. My name is Stacey Walking and I'm a the executive assistant. Bahamas Striping Group of Companies, it's a company that gives back to the community. Over the years, we have donated our striping services to stripe uh, 26 basketball courts free of charge. We have donated ham and turkey during the Christmas season as well as toys to the needy family. And, and we continue to, to do more as we grow. Four years ago, I, I never thought that the business would be where it is today. Bahamas Striping has created uh, an avenue for, for young Bahamians to literally take on a skill, learn a trade, and take it on to the next level. My name is Anton Teresa, I'm 18 years old, and I've been working for Bahamas Striping almost two years now. Bahamas Striping is a career, not just a job, but gives me a skills that few Bahamians have. The new generation in the Bahamas, uh, well, when you look at it, I think they need a second chance. Uh, when I was coming up as a young child, I, I had a second chance and that's why you see me standing here today. So I want to use what I went through as a, as a testimony and share with the guys them and give them a second chance so they could try, try and make life better for themselves. Basically, I'm here to just run through and show you what I've been through. I've been through the same thing with you guys have been through now. Because you guys here through it at once, you know? Uh, well, I started off when I was in school, for the gang by me, getting the thrill of it, you know? Smoking a lot of weed, sometimes getting a little bit. But, so when it cost me nine months, it cost me nine months in camp and I'm just, and while it was stuck, I just thought, you know, what am I doing? So I decided to go on the right road again. But afterwards, when I moved back and I saw, went to, went to school to see him do his stuff, life started still there, so just slipped back into the same start. After a while, it started getting serious. CID search your nose, do you search your nose, you know? Yeah, no, it's dirty a bit. But afterwards, they got introduced to Obama Scraper. And he sat down with a tire, Mr. Mitchell, one evening. And he asked me, where do I see myself in the next four years? And it really opened my eyes, you know? And I went on, I thought about it. And the next day, he came, came back. And I told him, I don't know. No, but after a while, it was still, still with them. Started my and seeing friends again, partying. Coming home, they can't get up to wait the next morning. So, and I did it, we get fired. Got fired. Then the year boss found the real threat. He pleaded with Mr. Mitchell to give me an next chance. But he did, and he asked, he asked me if I'm serious. And he said, yes. He said, if I may ask something once, I'm going. But I'm still here today, you know? But I'm just here to show you that this is a striving young man. All of this here is, all, all of this is, is his. And he is not old enough. He's 27. He's 27. He put us ideas together on a positive state. And what he did, he fell up a company that they call for arm scraping. Uh, each one of you guys can do it, you know. You have something in you but call it will, will power. Once you take a will power and they react at the right way, you be whatever you want to be. You know, I'm always so the other two and you know me was with my chair. And he gives me good advice. They at least stay on the right, right path. And even tell the stay friends, they pass me, you know, travels you get so off and more than nothing. Call it what you don't call it. Amen. I thought that. 
But you guys can do it, man. Just keep your heads up. Fly it. Four years ago, I, I never thought that the business would be where it is today. It's a company that gives back to the community. Bomber Striving is a career, not just a job, it gives me a skills that few be him in town. The new generation in the Bahamas, uh, well, when you look at it, they, I think they need a second chance. Uh, when I was coming up as a young child, I, I had a second chance and that's why you see me standing here today. So I want to use what I went through so they can try and make life better for themselves. Yeah, good evening, gents. Um, my name is Brian Bostock. Um, as you can tell, I'm from the United Kingdom. I'm not from here in the Bahamas, so I don't know what everybody's position is in your lives. I don't know what your social backgrounds are. Um, what I'd like to basically stress is the reason why I'm here in this company is to train young Bahamians like yourselves how to do the job that I do. Um, at the end of the day, you guys have to ask yourselves a question. Where do I want to be in a couple of years' time? Is this the life you really want to do? Is this the life you really want? Is this the person you want to be? You have a lot of questions to ask yourselves. You have a lot of hurdles that are going to come before you. Um, it doesn't matter which country you come from. Um, but like I say, um, I'm here basically to help people get into a lifestyle whereby they can get into an employment situation and they can earn themselves some money, they can have a better lifestyle. We all know what money brings. Money brings some kind of happiness to some people and it brings a lot of tragedy to a lot of people. Um, like you just heard the story about Travis, we also have two other guys here who have just turned 18. Uh, one just left Doris Johnson, one just left another school, St. Andrews, I believe. They didn't come out of school with great employment, you know, uh, grades. They, they're, they're not really employable. But Mr. Mitchell has got a attitude whereby he loves to give people second chances. Some people don't really see a second chance as a way of moving forward. Mr. Mitchell's taken that on board and he is willing to give people a second chance. I think everybody deserves a second chance in life. But it's what you want to make your choices. It's how you choose to make your second chance. Uh, like I say, I want you to understand the reason I'm here is to train young men in the operations that we do and using this equipment, using all the machinery which Mr. Mitchell has purchased. And he's, I mean, just take a look around you guys. This building didn't cost a couple of dollars. This building cost a lot of money. That money was built and earned and worked for sleepless nights, working until 11 o'clock at night, checking emails. All of these things will come to you eventually, but what you need to understand right now is where are you taking yourselves? Where are you going to be in two years' time? I'd love to be able to stand here in two years' time and say, remember that time you sat in front of me? Because this, this, this company grows every single day. This company has a lot of opportunities for people like you. Young men like you, we will need to employ as this business grows and grows and grows. I might be training one or two of you guys in the next couple of years. I hope that you know some of you are given a chance to come back here and learn what we do out on the road. When I train young Bahamians, I also don't just train people how to put a line on the road. I also train people how to make themselves safe at work. If this isn't the line of work that you want, those training things that you learn will also be taken to your next phase in your life. So. You have to understand that training and education is something that you really need to be looking at now <laughs> and taking seriously. Um, when you hear Mr. Mitchell's story, you'll obviously understand that anything's possible, guys. It's just a matter of you making the right choices. At the moment, obviously, from what I've heard, some of you are on the wrong path right now. You can always get off that path, you know. Just think about it. A bit like a jitney. You get on a jitney and you think, this ain't the jitney for me. I'm going to get on the one behind because that's going to take me to the right place. They're the questions you need to be raising with yourselves. You know, is, is, is this where I want to be in five years' time? Do I want the police chasing me every day? Do I want the police looking over my shoulder, knocking at my parents' door, calling me up, putting me on a tag? This ain't a life, man. This ain't a life for you guys. You deserve better. I mean, 
you know, I've, I've, I've heard a lot about the programme that you guys are on and certain situations you've been in and things. At the end of the day, the reason you're here today is hopefully to take something away from this experience today and realise that you have a chance to change your lives. Mr Mitchell took a great... A, well, he's, he's basically on a great journey right now. But that journey started with a small step, guys. A small step. He took one step. One step at a time. All great journeys have started with one small step. And it's time you guys really need to wake up and think to yourselves, is this who I want to be in five years' time, ten years' time? It's now your time. You know, you've been given the, the joy of life. Don't waste it. I'd just like to thank you for your attention. I hope you do leave this place with some kind of information that you know will help you make that small step, that first step in the right direction. So thanks for your time. Four years ago, I, I never thought that the business would be where it is today. It's a company that gives back to the community. Bomber Striping is a career, not just a job, but give me a skill that few behemoths have. The new generation in the Bahamas, uh, well, when you look at it, they, I think they need a second chance. Uh, when I was coming up as a young child, I, I had a second chance and that's why you see me standing here today. So I want to use what I went through so they can try and make life better for themselves. We wanted to bring you on here. Uh, I, I watched the shopkeeping program, right? And I saw where you all went to the prison and I saw how it impacted each other. You understand? And what I thought about was when I was your age, and it's the same stuff you all doing, it's the same stuff I used to be doing. I'm only 27 years old, right? And to see what, what I have accomplished. I didn't get this through selling drugs. I didn't get it through gang banging, stealing, uh, killing. I got this through hard work, understand? Uh, making the right decisions. I can remember when I was back in school, back in classes, uh, back in school, fighting, getting the problems. I was labeled as a bad boy. Me, I have two younger brothers, just younger than me. And our name was so bad in the community until my mother used to walk around with her head down. You understand? I didn't, I mean, it, 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 I felt it, but at that time, I didn't really, like, it didn't really hit me. I can remember one of the changing points in my life was. One time when I was in the 11th grade, uh, we were having a fun day, uh, no, actually it was a sports day, when everybody was going to run, run to the track, to go on the track field, and me and my boys, were hanging out together, right? Um, one of the guys who we had beaten with, I don't know at the time, decided to walk past our, our bench. So he walked past and was standing right there and me and my brother sitting side by side. So my brother decided that he can jump down. When I see him jump down, I jump down. He walk up to the guy, grab the guy, and he like this. It just so happens to be that I was close enough to him that when I see the knife, I just hit his shoulder. I just hit his elbow like that. And he ended up missing the guy and the knife dropped. And I said, boy, what you doing? He said, boy, I getting ready to kill this boy. And I thought to myself, right, I wonder where he get this from. You know where he get it from? From me, his older brother. Because he saw me fighting. He saw me uh, being mischievous. He saw me doing everything wrong. And you know what? He followed me every step of the way. I could rem There's never one time that the police came for me when I didn't take my little brother. You understand? So that day, I ran and I think to myself, how could, it hurt me that day to know that I nearly lost my brother to prison, you understand, for murder. Because trust me, this guy, you know, he lost his life, you should see it. You understand, he was going to kill that guy today, that day. And it hurt me to know that I was about to lose my brother. So from that day on, I began to become more positive. You know what, instead of me and my brother skipping school together, I went to class. I encouraged him to go to class. I, I started, I buckled down. And within that same time frame, my teacher came to me and said, you know what, Taro? You've been in school for, you've been in high school for six years. 
you know what, if you don't buckle up, you don't graduate today. You understand? And I thought, that, you know, the shame I would have been. Everybody else walking up getting me the diploma, and I sitting there. So I began to buckle down. I started going to class, getting good grades, and, and so forth, and encouraging my brother. My brother didn't turn around right away. You understand? Because he was so out of control. Because just to go back to that same day when he when he done was started, he started with all right. As I hold him down, he said, let me go. He said, you see this, Cario? Whenever you're doing something, and I hold you down, you beat me up. You understand? And, and I, I can tell you this now. I did everything I could do. Me and my brother on the fight today. Just because I wanted him to go home. He didn't want to go. And I realized the type of role model I was. I wanted to be a positive role model for my brother's stuff. Right? And I began to do all the right stuff, go to class, pay attention to school, uh, obey my parents now, understand? And that's the reason why you see me standing here today. And to you guys, all I, all I gotta say to y'all is, life is too precious to waste it on fighting. What what I get you? Fight when you get you dead or in jail. You hit a guy too hard in his head, he died, you go to jail for what? He look at your girl. That's what you go to jail for? Think about it. That's what you go to jail for? You could be, at your age right now, you could be anything you want to be in life. All it takes is for you to settle down, make the right decisions, start obeying your parents, obeying the, te the teachers. You understand? The simple stuff. And as I saw the Shock Children program, I just wanted to bring you guys here, you understand? Just to let you know that, yeah, you fight yesterday, you get kicked out of school, or so forth, but that don't mean your life is over. If you start to date to make the right decisions, you could be five years, four years later, where, where I am standing now, you understand? Talking to other young men, trying to get them to do the right thing. But I just, I just wanted to share you all that. And, you know, Some of y'all may take it in, some of y'all may not. But I can guarantee you, if you don't, if you do not take it in, we 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 had daily. The next one dead. The next one gets sent up to Fox up, right? It's them today. It could be you tomorrow. If you stay on the same path you're going. You understand? So it, it is in your best interest. So come on man, let's, let's, let's get this thing together. I'm tired of seeing young men doing the banking and shuffle. You understand? I'm tired of seeing young men on t-shirts. You understand? Like, like, and for what? Silliness. Making dumb decisions. You understand? All of y'all look like smart guys. You understand? All it takes for y'all to just to think. Take a second and think before you walk. Me, when I was younger, I was extremely short of patience. Extremely. You couldn't, you couldn't look at me more. You know why? Because I didn't care. I, did, I, did, I didn't have no care in the world. Like I say, it wasn't until that day that I realized I almost lost my brother that I began to care. I began to want to do more life. When I started this company four years ago with $5,000. $5,000 bought me the same machine in there. The same machine in there. That's, that's five thousand dollars for the That machine in there for seventeen thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars got me started to, to purchase that. And from there, I went into the striping business. And from day one, it was a fight. Like Brian said, from day one, I had people telling me they would never give me a job. You think I, I think they're sitting down? No. I went out and I had to fight to get to where I'm at today. That's why when you see when you see Rich Bahamas Stripe, that's why I'm so proud about it. You understand? Because I know what I went through. I want y'all to understand that doing the doing the wrong doing wrong things only can bring heartache for yourself, for your parents, 
on, on, on to everything, you understand? So, I just wanted to encourage you all, you understand? Just to bring you all up, let you all know that you all might see me on TV speaking and, and your parents will tell you all, yeah, I want you all to be like that, that young gentleman. But your parents don't know my story. They don't know that the same way they're telling you all, you all will never be nothing. My parents will tell me the same thing, you understand? So I just want to let you all know that, yes, what you all doing now, it only takes one decision to turn your life around and go out to and do something successful in life. Understand? And after seeing the program, I began to think on how I could be a part of it. And this is, this is one part. And I began to think on how can, what incentive could I give to you young gentlemen to help keep you all on the right track? And what I came up with is that I want you all to do three things for me. If you all do those three things, it ain't gonna be this summer, but next summer. If you all can get good grades in school, uh, if your parents can say that you're always manly, respectful, uh, and, and you're all was behaving, uh, you're all, well, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even say to be uh, on the honor road. All I want y'all to do for, 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 the, for the next year until next summer, be respectful, stay out of trouble. I can guarantee, I will guarantee five of you guys a job working with me for, the, for, for next summer. All I want you to do is, be, is do those three things. Stay out of trouble, get a good report from the teachers, and show your parents love, respect, and manners. And I can guarantee, I, I will guarantee you all five, five of you all a job for next summer. My, my last thing is, I mean, I saw you all heard it all through the structure, the, the, the treatment program, that you all got to get on the right track. Honestly, I don't want to count and, and just, that's why I was, uh, it's this one here. I start when he, I, he had me laughing when he, when he said it, what did he say? Uh, he said the guy of powers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had me laughing. And I said, yeah, you get a sharp mouth, you know what I'm saying? Then it, if you could turn that into positive, just positive thinking, you understand? That, that right there, a sharp mouth right there, you can be a lawyer. You understand? That, that all you get to do is, is, is think of ways everybody else can get. You understand? Think of ways that you can use your gift to better yourself. You understand? It, trust me, bad company and the way to go. My friends, the majority of my friends right now in jail, dead. I even get a few friends missing. No one knows where they is. What you think happened to them? Stop it. You understand? And it's all because making wrong decisions. What I want you to do is think. Is think before you are. You understand? Make good decisions. Uh, be positive. And maybe one day, it could be one of y'all standing up to a group of young guys, telling them how y'all went through truck, the short treatment program, and how y'all turned your life around. And, and that's, that's what I want to see y'all do. And so that's why I decided to bring y'all here, show y'all my facility, to get y'all dreaming. You understand? To one day that you want, you, this is what you want. You ain't gonna get this by fighting, you ain't gonna get this by stealing, you can get this by selling drugs. You understand? You can get this by hard work, discipline, respectful, honest, and being dedicated. You understand? So that's my word to you guys. My name is Atario Mitchell and I'm the president of Bahama Striping Group of Companies. Each company is diverse in its own way. Uh, Bahamas Striping deals with the uh, road safety markings. Airport maintenance deals with the maintenance of airport landing strips and, and, and runways. Uh, Caribbean Pavement Solution deals with the pavement maintenance throughout the Bahamas and the Caribbean. And Bahamas Team Photography deals with team photography at tourist destinations throughout the Bahamas. 
My name is Stacy Walking and I'm the Executive Assistant. Bahamas Striping Group of Companies, it's a company that gives back to the community. Over the years, we have donated our striping services to stripe uh, 26 basketball courts free of charge. We have donated ham and turkey during the Christmas season as well as toys to the needy family. And, and we continue to, to do more as we grow. Four years ago, I, I never thought that the business would be where it is today. Bahamas Striping has created uh, an avenue for, for young Bahamians to literally take on a skill, learn a trade, and take it on to the next level. My name is Anton Fraser, I'm 18 years old, and I've been working for Bahamas Striping almost two years now. Bahamas Striping is a career, not just a job, but giving me the skills that few Bahamians have. The new generation in the Bahamas, uh, well, when you look at it, we, I think they need a second chance. Uh, when I was coming up as a young child, I, I had a second chance and that's why you see me standing here today. So I want to use what I went through as a, as a testimony and share with the guys them and give them a second chance so they could try, try and make life better for themselves.